People used to laugh at the idea of computers becoming small enough and useful enough that they would make it into the homes of every person in the world. Through Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, and many others, computers have not only made it into our homes, but they have become a part of our everyday lives. From browsing the internet, to data processing, to listening to music and looking at photos, most of us use some type of computing device every single day. But have you ever wondered where all those megabytes and gigabytes of pictures, music, and other data is being stored? Hi, this is Giancarlo Massaro reporting for Demtech.org. Our story begins with Vincent Massaro, a web programmer in the Office of Public Affairs and Communications at Yale University. He will take us on a trip back to the 80s and 90s so we can see how far mankind has come and how data storage has evolved over the years. So do you remember those days when you had to use floppy disks to store data and you had like eight or nine different floppy disks to install a program or a game? Mm. Yep, I remember those days. We had to, programs would come in uh, packs of four to eight disks and you'd have to put in disk one and run the installer and then after a little while it would say take out disk one and put in disk two and rinse and repeat. Now do you remember that actual transition when you went from floppy disks to CDs that could store a lot more data? Yeah, the first floppy disk that I used was on a, an Apple 2GS computer uh, back in elementary school. It was uh, five and a quarter inch floppy, a really thin floppy, and you had to put it in the computer and jam the lever down in order to load it in, and then you'd start up your computer. Um, and that would load in, you know, all the games and stuff that we would play and, you know, educational games and stuff that we would use. Uh, the next computer I had was a Radio Shack Tandy and that came with a CD-ROM and the big thing at the time was multimedia CD-ROM um, so they included some CD-ROM discs with your computer uh, that had some educational software and stuff like that but um, the move going to that um, didn't seem huge to me at the time um, going from the Apple to the Tandy was like a, a huge difference but CD-ROM at the time was really big and there was a lot of uh, work being done on multimedia CD-ROM and you know uh, using CD-ROM as the new vehicle for educational software. Now that we see how data storage has evolved over the years, you might be wondering where that leaves us now and in the near future. We now turn to an interview with a member of the Box.com team, an online data storage and service collaboration service that allows you to share, manage, and access all of your business content online. What is cloud computing? It's basically storage over the internet where you have ordinarily you have like a hard drive right so you store all your stuff on that hard drive but sometimes it can crash and you lose all your data that way so if you have it stored on the internet it can be stored on tons of different servers where if, even if one crashes you can access it where it's stored on another one because everything's backed up several times and it's also good because you can access it from anywhere, not just at home on your one computer. Do you think cloud computing is the end of the data storage evolution, or do you think that cloud computing will one day be phased out and some other type of data storage solution will take over? It's That's something that's always going to be changing and evolving, no matter what sort of cool technologies come out. Like Cloud computing is great because you can access data from anywhere, and it's really efficient or cost-efficient for most people because you don't need to tote around a hard drive with you everywhere you go and duplicating all the data on tons of hard drives that you have in all sorts of different spots that gets really expensive and I think the advent of the solid state drive plus some element of cloud computing put together is sort of the direction we're heading. Where we go from here is a mystery but we have a feeling that this is only the beginning of the journey for data storage. Reporting for Demtech.org, this is Giancarlo Massaro, good night.